Okay, well this uh, project was posted because the person did this project using Illustrator and wanted to know how to do it and make the cut. And so in the forum, we have the start of this project with these shapes right here that were made in Illustrator. And the question was, well, how do we do this and make the cut? So I've been playing with this this afternoon. And um, Susan is uh, really good at slice form, so she'll probably have some additional um, things to suggest. But what was um, helpful is that we already have in the notes, we have the dimensions of the shapes and we have the spacing between the slots and we have the measurements of the slots. So that's where I started with this. To uh, first make the slots, I add a new layer and go to basic shapes and type in SQ and double click on the square to add that to my screen. Now I want the green lock at the top of the screen to unlock the aspect ratio and I want to size this to what he said. He wanted the the little uh, width of the slice to be 0, 0.375 inches. I'll just copy that and the width I'm going to put here as highlight it and then paste it 0 0.0375 inches and then press enter and that gives me this very narrow slit and as far as length goes I can use let me turn this one so that it's up right and I'm just gonna I noticed that his, he's made half the size of this circle, which was 3 inches. So I'm going to make the height 1.5 inches because it has to be at least half the width. Now I know when Susan makes her slices, she makes them slightly longer. That's so that they can overlap a little. But I, I did cut this and assembled it. and. It goes together very nicely with the measurements he gave, so I'll just go ahead and keep this at the one and a half inch height here. And what I want to do now is make these seven slices. So I'm going to go up to Edit, Duplicate, and I'm giving it seven columns and one row. Now he says. I think it's he, that the um, steps between the slices measures 0.375 inches, but also that the spacing between them includes the size of the cutout. So what I did was subtracted the point 0375 from the 0.375 and came up with a spacing of 0.3385 between them. So that's what I put in here, 0.3385 and then hit apply. Once I had that, then I'm going to use uh, control and shift and drag down another set for this group here and then the center one we notice is moved up. So I'm going to use my control key and my up arrow to move this and I'll zoom in typing 4 and 3 so we can see what we want the bottom of these to be at the same height as this one. It would help to um, will help to have these lined up on a grid line so we can make sure that they meet where they need to. So I'm going to drag these down here to a, a grid line and have the tops of 
these lines go up to the grid line and the bottom of this one to meet the grid line there. Once I have that, I can group these by clicking on the Join button at the bottom or Control plus J. And now I need just um, a couple more copies of this. So Control shift drag gives me one for this set and one for this set here. Now what I need is some circles and he gives us the size of the circles so he's done the math for us and figuring out the circle size and and all the spacing. What I'm going to do is join these up here so now we have all of the slits and I'm going to add the circles just uh, import basic shapes and this time I'll type CI enter double click <laughs> and I need one two three four just holding control shift and and uh, drag so here this one is three inches I'm going to make this a gold lock icon so that the width will be the same as the height and press enter so I have a three inch circle for the top one this one I'm going to copy from his notes the exact measurements of the second one and paste it and press enter copy the size of the third one then I can not have to think too much and type big numbers just control V in there paste it and then the the last circle copy control C and paste that in here and press enter so now I have all the circles that I need now uh, before I do anything further I've got to create this um, top design here which can be done with a couple basic shapes and um, I'll add a circle and I'll add a square Now for the circle, I want to size it to a half inch, 0 0.0, I mean 0.5, enter. And I want to make a shadow to put that hole in the circle. I could have used a donut, I suppose. That probably would have been the best. If you want to use a shadow, you can um, put a minus to make it an inset shadow and accept. That seems awful small. We'll stack those and join. I think I'll go get a donut that's easier. So if I type DO, then I've got a donut here already, which I can resize to the half inch. And we can check that over here. Oh, it's quite a bit smaller. So I'm just going to resize to what they have. Oh, it's three quarters of an inch. That's why. It's 0.75. I forgot. Okay, so we have um, a donut. And we want this one to be as wide as the distance between two of these, which we figured out was 0.3385. So I'm going to resize that to um, 0.3385 and line it up with the left. If I select both of these and type L, it lines them up. Then I can drag the height of this one up. We type a 4 and a 3 so we can get a little closer. And I really would like them to line up there, but I don't want the hole to be invaded. So I can just double click, triple click, and move this right plus down so that it's not covering up the hole. Then select both of them and weld. And that gives me the little hook on the top. 
So now that I have the ornament, I can line this up wherever I want it to be. And you notice that this slot runs through about the center of the circle. So I want this piece of the tail to line up with the center of this so I can kind of drag it down, line up the little plus in the center. Now I use my arrow to move it up holding the control key until I get the spacing here sort of like it is there. Maybe a tap down. Whenever ever I have that the way that I want it, then I can, I'm going to copy this circle because so I think I'm going to add these before I weld and copy. So now that I have this shape, the, this set of shapes, and I have this set of, and I have the circle, I can type S with both of them stacked, and then select my, my slots and move them to the top or until I see the bottom lines meet the center of the circle. I want to make sure that those that they're not any taller than the circle because I'd rather have the slots overlapping low and I know that I made them so that they would go halfway. Now that I've got these shapes selected here, I can go to um, the Boolean join, which is Control U, and you see that it sliced the slots right out of the circle and that's what I want so I click apply and now I can uh, duplicate this because I could use that for the part of the slice part of the design and then this I'm going to zoom in a little bit and make sure I have it lined up well before I weld it so I'm using my left arrow key to tap on it now I'm going to hold a shift and click and weld. So now I have that first top piece of the design. Now originally this was rotated so I'm using the rotate 90 degrees and I think that's just to fit it on the page. So I've got that piece there. So all I need to do for the rest is select holding shift the circle and the set of lines type S to stack them and again go to boolean join apply and that piece is done and again left click hold a shift and click on the circle type S to stack them and boolean join apply then again on the last one hold a shift and the circle type S to stack and boolean join. Now I've got all these pieces. Now to make the complete project we really need to have 14 pieces total. So um, we can get rid of this extra one. Oh, just to make sure that they line up with what he was doing I did double check and my um, pieces look just the same as the originals that were made in Illustrator. Now, I don't, um, I've never tried doing this in Illustrator, but for me doing this in Make the Cut is so much easier. So the pieces are exactly the same as they were in Illustrator. Hey Julie, so be the next, before yes. you go on, um, so there was a question uh, for Tricia asks, so just what did you do to bring that one corner down on the extended square? And I'm not sure which Okay, I, I have them. Um, if I type in a square, SQ, I add my square. You'll notice right now that the handles have this little plus sign on it. If I click it, it toggles between the resizing the rotation and the distortion handles. With the distortion handles you can move and what I did first was I resized it to be um, three quarters of an inch wide and then clicking it again twice I get these 
um, handles which allow me to drag a side where I want. Well, I wanted this to come down some, so I just uh, clicked on the corner cross and dragged it down until it was no longer overlapping the center of the circle. Any questions about that? Nope. They, All right, thanks. Sorry about answer that. Answer your question? Okay. So that's how I made that shape. I, when I did it before, I just drew it in, but this is a little bit easier just to drag that one corner down so it's out of the way. So um, to assemble the project, I don't need two of these, but I do need one of these without the, the circle on it, the hanger. And then to make the rest of the pieces for the designer, just select them, hold control, shift, and drag, and then flip these because these will go in the opposite direction. Then when you assemble, you assemble from the center out. So you take the center pieces, the largest circles first, and um, watch some videos on how to assemble slice forms because it's it's kind of like weaving I think you you could you have to weave some of these pieces over and under to get them all to hold together